So in other words, if somebody says, yes, we are going to do that, to say, can you say more about what yes means to you, right? You said, yes, we are going to do that. Can you tell me more about how we are going to do that? Right. You can paraphrase it, or again, the, the, the term that she coined is double click to really say, let me just repeat, or let me just make sure I understood what you said. To really make sure that you are both walking away with the same clarity and with the same conclusion. And that is actually Judith. She passed away last November. Uh, she worked on this again for almost 40 years. And she created this term, conversational intelligence. She wrote the book, Conversational Intelligence, in 2014. And then in 2016, she started to, to train other coaches to become certified to go out and teach this. And I was actually in her first cohort in 2016 and got certified and got trained by her. So what is conversational intelligence? It is a methodology to understand how conversation impact our relationships with others. Because again, conversations are the connection of relationships. They are the connection between our spouses. They are the connection with our friends. They are the connections with our clients. They are the connections with, with, you know, with each other here in the room. So we have to understand how important conversations are. The next thing is it's a methodology to activate parts of the brain that trigger trust and innovation. What we have learned now in neuroscience is that trust sits in the different part of the brain than distrust. And one of the main ingredients of good conversations is trust. So we have to know what to do in order to activate the trust so that people actually lean in the conversation, feel comfortable, and also then have the emotional courage to speak up. Because when people don't have trust, they will not share their emotions, they will not have that courage to speak up their emotions, and that is typically where conversations start to derail. It's a methodology to connect, navigate, and grow with each other and catalyze profound shifts in communication. Because again, everything happens through conversations. With all of that, it increases the impact and the effectiveness in a company as well as in relationships. So here's how I see it. We all have been taught how to communicate, right? Who taught us that? Your, ma your parents, right? But who taught you? Where did you learn to communicate effectively? In school? Okay. Did you have classes, direct classes, where you talked about whether you were taught how to listen more effectively, whether you, how to listen to connect? Well, I think it, it directly, yes, yeah. because you have, uh, as, a, as a grade schooler, you uh, have exercises, mm -hmm. both reading and oral, where you have to identify the subject of, the, of, the, of whatever is being presented, yeah. whether it's read or whether it's verbal. And you are taught. You are taught. But, you are, we, but you said the right term, though. We have been indirectly taught. It's not really a conscious training where we really learned about the importance of communication. And so often, if you really think about it, I mean, it's not that my parents have had figured it out how to communicate effectively. I tell you, there have been many arguments where my parents were really, really loud. And not only that, I learned from my dad. You know, if, if I want to get my point across, I have to get loud, I have to get emotional, and I have to intimidate other people so that I shut them up. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that, right? It's, that's what my dad knew, but that is the habit that I developed until I consciously realized, okay, this really does not work as effectively as I think it should. Right. So then the next thing is, of course, you know, a higher, better is then to really upgrade our conversational skills and maybe read a book about conversational intelligence or go to a class on communication skills. Or, I mean, there are so many other different methodologies around 
communication, and they're all pretty, pretty similar. But then really what I say is the best thing is to have conversational intelligence combined with personal development. And why is that so? And when I talk about personal development is what you talked about, Jeff, is the conversations with yourself. Well, I, I think it comes down to our mentality is we never stop learning. It's always evolving as far as our ability to effectively communicate with others to really understand where they're coming from because we have to keep in mind when you're having a conversation with that person, that client, or whatever, you really have to understand what their background is, where they're coming from, in order to effectively approach that conversation you're going to have with them. Right. Because how many times has somebody come to speak with you and they're talking way over your head? Right. Or, or they're talking so far beneath that it makes you feel like they didn't say an idiot or something. So really understanding your audience, understanding who you're talking to. And that's why I say it's always something, we're never at a level of perfection when it comes to what you say, conversational intelligence, because we need people that we have to meet. It, it's a practice. It's there, there will never be perfection. It's always a practice. Yes, Eric. For the people who are in this room, we're all in relatively similar age group. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but have you have you so have you had this have you have you had this conversation with a millennial or someone in their twenties and thirties lately? I mean, I just want because when I interact with those mm -hmm. people, this seems to be too superfluous to, 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 this to what? Not, this is not something that younger people seem to want to spend their time refining their conversation. They may not want to, but then again, really, as I said, where, where does the quality of conversations come from? So in other words, we can do our end. correct, but that's all you can do, you know? And the good thing is if you are just changing your approach and your, the thing is we can only work on ourselves. We have no influence on anybody else. All we can do is work on ourselves and improve, you know, and work and, and fine tune our skill. And sometimes that is enough to pull other people forward, to pull other people out, to inspire them to say, I want to learn from that. Oh, I really like how you're doing that. And that is, that is really all that we can do. And then there comes a time where you have to say with somebody like this, either this is going to work out and I want to work with this person or, this is just not a client that is compatible with what I want to do and create. And that is fine. And there will be other business professionals, for example, who can work with these kind of clients. Yeah, and Eric, I think that's a that's that question. And, and the, um, uh, the implication is that everybody in our age is just not on this conversation. I don't know what I'm just saying. It's not just names. I know a lot of people, you know. What I'm saying is, is also not that we're all good at it. What I'm saying is, this makes sense mm -hmm. to us. Yeah, we we've had experience. We've been through conversations not working out. Right. Ours. And um, you know, this is really right on the point because one of the biggest questions I you know get from people that are in transition or you know, recently out of the corporate world is, gee, you know, how do I reconnect with you know corporate America? Especially when you know all they seem to have is a bunch of millennials working for them, and uh, gee, you know, there's age discrimination out there. I said, I don't know, you know, you've got to turn you know what you think are limitations into assets, and we've got a ton of them. And one of the biggest assets that we have is that whole interpersonal skill set that we've developed over forty, you know, whatever many years. Mm -hmm. And um, so that I view that as a huge opportunity when you're trying to engage a client that's got a bunch of right. millennials because communications is probably a huge issue. Um, and that that this kind of my point. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. not this no, point, no. But I, I'm just interested in in if you've had a conversation about this in a group this size with people who are in their twenties and thirties, mm -hmm. and what the reaction is. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just interested. Because I feel that I can bring people to my world yeah. to some degree, but they really want me to come to their world. 
is, is more and a lot of their work is online as well. If you, yeah. if you, as you start a conversation, email is also a part of the conversation. It is a part of conversation. Instagram, Twitter, right. so what have you. Yeah. And, and it's really about you getting into their world and you wanting to learn more about them and you wanting to find out what gets them excited. Because in the end, even though they may not be as skilled or differently skilled when it comes to communication and their openness, they still have that need to belong, to engage and connect with somebody. Because that is our human instinct. Yes, Artie? Yeah, you, I'm just going to build on what you were going to say, actually. I was going to practically say what you were going to say. Okay. We might have built-in prejudices ourselves, mm -hmm. like millennials. Um, we know, and you know, we need to listen to them because guess what? They know too. Right. And again, that is where the personal development comes in because the personal development, our beliefs, you know, our beliefs that we have around about the world, our beliefs that we have about what it means to be a leader, our belief, what, it, what we have about our staff and our team, all of that impacts how we communicate. And, and it is kind of like the, what I always call personal development is like the operation system on a computer, you know, and then your business skills, your business expertise is like a running software on top of it. But if the operating system is out of date, if, they, it, if, if it is still running on, on, what is it, Windows 2003, right? Any, any other software that you put on top of it is always going to crash that, that computer. So, gotta come, can't, gotta upgrade. Well, Mike, you would have known. Was there Windows 2003? I was just thinking about my 15 year old granddaughter, how I discovered that rap and hip hop is not music. Okay. <laughs> And it, it requires a different kind of skill then too, a different kind of awareness. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. It's changed a bit. So I don't want to buy Justin Myers. Okay. It does introduce America to certain phrases in English. Yeah. It is understanding, you know, are we communicating? We're speaking, we're listening, but are we communicating? Is what I'm saying being understood? Right. And, so I get your point. Yeah. And again, I will also talk about how we have to, how our heart is included in that whole process as well, Do because it's not. What my colleague over there said, this is very applicable to us and our generations, but to the young people coming along, but this is the young human nation. Uh, the the art of conversation is, is, is one of the things that we're going to be like in 20 years when these people are politics, running the country, and running businesses. Oh. I, I actually don't agree with that. And, and I will, um, and I'll just, I, it comes from some experiences that I've had with millennial clients, but I've had three millennial clients. These are all people, you know, late 20s to, some of them are approaching 40 years old. Right. And they were, they were the most, they were the ones that wanted to have the most phone calls with me. Mm -hmm. that, I mean, from a verbal, like it was not texting, it was not, My I mean, is it was really, and it might be the role, that, the role that I'm in, but, but I just, I noticed that, that there's this generation, they were, they wanted a lot of communication, they wanted a lot of discussion. Come the just came in, after four years, I never had one single phone call from the IT, which you may know. So email and text. Okay. Well, nobody wants to talk to that. But 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 again, we the thing is we cannot we cannot point fingers at the different generation and say that they are this problem. What we have to do is we have to say 
because we take responsibility for everything that is happening to us and we also take responsibility for everything that is not happening to us to say how do i have to shift my conversational skills in order to connect with millennials because everybody wants to connect and even to the point of saying to that person hey david i have a tough time connecting with you what would help you that we can build a better relationship